What's up guys, it's Tom with Ferris Engineering and today we're going to be going over the installation of the front splitter for your 718 GT4. Alright, so with the addition of the front splitter, we of course are going to see an increase in front downforce. Um, we do manufacture our units out of a carbon thermoplastic which basically uh, exhibits excellent wear characteristics. Uh, you can beat this thing up every day at the track if you'd like, um, and this thing will keep uh, coming back at you. Uh, that's a weird way to say that, but uh, yeah. Anyways, better front end downforce is the goal of the front splitter, so let's dive into the install. All right, tools we need to complete the install. We need a T30 Torx uh, key or socket, uh, T-handle, whatever you want. Um, that's gonna go for a T25 as well a four millimeter Allen key or socket, a pick, preferably one that is hooked, kind of like this, 11 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, uh, an extension of sorts, a ratchet, a universal socket, four said ratchet, uh, 13 millimeter socket, and a large flat tip screwdriver or panel popper to get the radiator ducts off. All right, so what we will basically need to do in order to install the splitter is remove the front bumper. And if you like, you can remove the forward section of both front wheel wells. Uh, otherwise, you know, you only really need to remove a couple bolts. But basically, in order to get the bumper off, uh, we'll go through the bolts in a second. Start by taping off the front bumper and the headlight uh, just to protect everything when you go to remove and replace it. All right, so pop the frunk. And uh, what we're gonna need to do is get to the bolts in the front of the bumper. So in order to do that, we have to take all these plastics off, which I have basically already done so that I'm not embarrassed while you guys watch me struggle. Um, they're all removed by just uh, like interior trim clips or panel clips. Um, so pull this uh, rear center one off first. And then you're gonna work on the sides. For the side pieces, you will need to pop uh, a clip-like thing out from the rear portion and then as you get towards the front there is a uh, right here uh, there is a slotted um, like a t-slot kind of thing coming out of the car so you will need to actually pull this uh, towards the rear of the car and then uh, the rear section will come out all right next remove the uh, forward center panel um, as you can see uh, just uh, some panel clips here. So you're just gonna pull them up, pop them loose. And then we have a series of four bolts, T25. Go ahead and remove, uh, I'm sorry, three bolts. Go ahead and remove those three T25s. And then we're gonna lift the car up, make sure you support it securely. And uh, we're gonna start removing the front wheel liners. All right, so one last thing before we jack the car up and uh, get this thing supported. We do need to remove uh, these clips that hold the bumper to the fender. So you'll notice there's a little hole um, right there on there. And you just grab a pick and you want to pull. Hit the ground, we're good. Uh, pull them out. All right, so we need to remove the wheel liner. And of course, we're gonna repeat this process on the other side of the car as well. But basically, there are gonna be two T25 bolts. And if you look at the center of the wheel arch, right up here on the top, um, and then there will be an assortment of other T25s. You got one over here, and then we have two on the bumper edge um, that we'll need to remove while we're in the wheel liner. I believe that's it. That's it. And once you have all those removed, we're gonna actually go underneath the car and we'll show you the bolts that are down there. All right, so once we have the car up in the air and we're able to access the bottom section of the front liner, uh, go ahead and remove, there should be five bolts. We got one, two, three, four, five. That's one holding it to the chassis, two to the bumper on the outer edge, and then two to the uh, front splash shield, the one that's got like the golf ball texture on it. Once you have those bolts removed, go ahead and take the wheel liner out from the car and repeat the process for the other side. All right, once you have both the wheel liners removed, which I'm obviously missing one still, uh, we're gonna focus on this front splash shield and so any bolts that are still remaining, you're gonna want to remove from the splash shield in order to get this thing down. Um, T25s. 
pull this shield out. All right, we got the shield removed. Next, we need to worry about on the, uh, so we're on the driver's side uh, here right now. We need to remove and disconnect the uh, headlight washer system. And in order to do that, we're gonna basically push this flat portion inwards and that should uh, release the, uh, the claws and then you can pull the hose uh, out of this guy. And we also need to disconnect this electrical connector right here. Now there's gonna be an electrical connector on both sides. Uh, however, there's only one connector for the headlight washer. All right, and then the final step for removing the bumper before actually removing the bumper is going to be removing the bolt that goes through this hole into the fender. There's gonna be one on each side, T30, and it's gonna be coming from the bottom. All right, so once you have the bumper pulled off of the car, this is what you're uh, left with. We've got the pedestrian bar here, and we have uh, the radiator ducts here. Obviously, this is only one, the other one's on the other side, uh, that we'll need to deal with. So we need to pull these off, um, and we'll need to pull the pedestrian bar off, and we'll go through the radiator ducts first. So the entirety of the uh, radiator duct uh, that connects to the, uh, I guess technically it connects uh, to the condenser, um, is gonna have these claws um, going all the way around. And so we're going to use basically a panel popper or a large flathead screwdriver, and we're just gonna release them one by one. As you get closer to the end, it should just release on its own. On the passenger side, don't forget to disconnect the air temp sensor, like so. Go ahead and repeat the process for the driver's side and then we're going to remove the pedestrian bar. So next thing is we're gonna remove the pedestrian bar. We have this tether uh, here, which is held on by this bracket that is held on by the 13 millimeter nut, which I've already broken loose. Uh, each side of the pedestrian bar is gonna be held on by 13 millimeter nuts uh, that are in a triangle shape. So you got one at the top and two at the bottoms. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and well, I already have them loosened, but I'm going to go ahead and loosen them up now. Once you have the uh, six 13 millimeter nuts, three on each side, uh, removed, this will be able to move. Uh, break loose and remove the 13 millimeter nut that's holding on the tether to the crash bar like so. And now we need to worry about removing this bracket. Uh, be careful. And there are tangs that go into the bottom and lock up into uh, this little aluminum bracket here. So just go and remove, disengage them. And the top will also kind of uh, have a claw that comes down over this bracket, so you'll need to pull up on it. Once you've done that, remove the pedestrian bar. All right, we're finally ready to start installing the splitter brackets as well as the splitter itself. So let's dive right into it. Go ahead and grab your main splitter bracket. That'll be this guy, the big honker right here. And you'll see the three holes. You guessed it, they're gonna go where the pedestrian bracket went. And you basically want the flat portion uh, or the, the portion with the you know, side, if you will, or the gusset to be facing the outside of the car. That's how you'll know you have the correct side. Once you have the 13 millimeter nuts uh, started on all of the studs, go ahead and torque them to 13 foot pounds. And when we come back, we're going to install the side brackets and then the center bracket. All right, uh, side brackets. You know you got the right one if it's pointed towards kind of like the front of the car and a little bit to the side. So the passenger side should be around like one o'clock, two o'clock. Grab three 16 millimeter button head cap screws and an 18 millimeter washer, or six technically. And then grab yourself a M6 serrated flange nut. 
and go ahead and start bolting the side bracket up to the main bracket like I'm doing here. All right, so once you have all the bolts started, go ahead and torque those M6 guys down to six foot pounds. Repeat the process for the other side, and then we're on to the center brace. All right, the center bracket, the big square tube. You're going to set it across the two main brackets. You'll notice that there is a tab bent up on the main brackets. And basically what we're going to do is bolt through them. Uh, another way to look at this is that the rivet nuts should be facing down. Uh, so we're going to take four 40 millimeter uh, button head cap screws, M6s, with the 18 millimeter washer. Put them through. You, you could realistically put them through the front or the back. That's up to you. And we're going to bolt this up to the main splitter brackets. All right, once you have those all started, you can either tighten them down now if you'd like. Uh, they'll be six foot pounds, just like all of our other M6 hardware. Uh, or you can wait to the very end. But now, uh, we're gonna get to the very end. We need to install the front brackets for uh, the splitter. Basically, we're gonna have two different types. We have one for the center, which is the big fat one. And then we have two outer ones, which are gonna be the skinny boys. Uh, we're gonna bolt these up to the center brace in the same manner. 40 millimeter button and cap screws, 18 millimeter washers, and the serrated flange nuts for the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and then we'll start assembling the splitter. All right, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and torque all of the button head cap screws to six foot pounds. All right, so since we have a two piece splitter design, we will need to use a plate slash bracket to attach the two halves together. The <clears throat> Forward section will be uh, basically held together by the big um, forward bracket we installed just a minute ago. So what we want to do is grab our uh, splitter bracket, just like that, four holes, just towards the rear of the splitter. Take your 20 millimeter button and cap screws and 18 millimeter washers and feed the bolts through the bottom so that the button head is facing the ground. Once we have all the bolts started, we're gonna go ahead and tighten them up and torque all four bolts to six foot-pounds. So in the, uh, I guess the hardware kit or whatever you wanna call it, you are provided with a tie rod. This tie rod is going to incorporate the crash bar uh, into the mounting process or uh, mounting points. And we're going to basically tie the crash bar to this um, cross brace or center brace uh, together. So put this up on, maybe if you wanna hit pause. All right, we have the tie rod here with our one inch extension. And then we have a clevis and a rod end on this side and we have a rod end on this side. This rod end, the one that is free and not bolted to a clevis, is going to be the one that is with the 5 16 or eight millimeter diameter hole going through it. And the other one is going to be a six millimeter diameter that is perfect for, you guessed it, a button head cap screw to go through the clevis as well. So we're using a 20 millimeter button head cap screw, 12 millimeter uh, washer, and a serrated flange nut. Do not tighten them down just yet. Just assemble this, and then we're gonna go put this on the car. All right, so while you can actually install the splitter rod without taking the shroud off, uh, I have found it to be easier, um, just recently, while I struggled on camera for a little while, to take the shroud off, um, and then you can basically slide the uh, tie rod, or you know, splitter rod, whatever you wanna call it, uh, through these kind of openings in the top and the bottom. And that way uh, you don't have to fight this thing. Otherwise you're like doing this and that. Um, it removes from the radiator in the same manner as the side uh, ducts. 
basically you just have those kind of like retainer claws that hold them up. So I've done that and now I'm going to try to get the duct back on the center radiator. And then we're going to adjust the splitter rod so that it makes contact with the center brace. Bing, bang, boom. We're good to go. With the splitter tie, tie rod, whatever you want to call it, on the car, we can go ahead and reinstall the 13 millimeter nut to the stud. Torque to 13 foot pounds. And if you have the splitter tie already adjusted correctly, go ahead and tighten up the jam nuts. Uh, the jam nuts technically should be about six foot pounds, but basically if you got a wrench, um, which I don't have one, I don't have one here. Um, just basically bottom them out, give them maybe a quarter of a turn, eighth to a quarter of a turn, and they'll be good to go. Make sure the bolt hole lines up with the cross brace down here. And we're back. 12 millimeter button head cap screw with a 12 millimeter washer. We are going to, there'll be a hole on the bottom side of the cross brace, center bracket, whatever you want to call it. And basically just going to line that up with the clevis. And you guessed it, tightened to six foot pounds. <clears throat> all right, so we've completed all of the mounting brackets uh, that are going to go on the front of the car. Now we need to reinstall the bumper. But before we do that, we need to put the radiator ducts back on. If you start with the passenger side or whenever you get to the passenger side, don't forget to reconnect the air temp sensor. And when you go to put the radiator ducts in, they're going to install in the reverse, uh, the same way that we took them out. But make sure that the, I guess you want to call it the leading edge of the duct actually gets tucked behind the center radiator duct. All right, we got the radiator ducts back on. Uh, everything for the front mounting brackets is done. So now we'll go ahead and grab a buddy and uh, reinstall the front bumper. What we need to do now is get the M6 U-nuts, should be four of them, and we're gonna install them here and here. Give you a close up in a minute. Next thing we're gonna do is grab that center splash shield we took off earlier with the golf ball, golf ball pattern. Remove one of the U-nuts from it and basically install it onto the second uh, hole on the fender liner. So that'll be the inboard hole on the fender liner. All right, so here's the first hole for the M6 U-nut. Moving over, we've got the second hole for the M6 U-nut. All right, so with the help of a friend, we go ahead and put the splitter up. Start with the four bolts in the uh, center of the splitter um, that go to the uh, center bracket that we installed earlier, uh, 25 millimeter button and cap screws with 18 millimeter washers, and basically start them maybe one or two threads, just so that our splitter can hang and uh, still bounce around. Now locate the 18 millimeter hole or slotted hole that is kind of in the middle of all these larger diameter um, holes here. Grab your 50 millimeter um, coarse thread screw, coarse thread screw, it's a Torx head screw. Put that up through the splitter and basically we're going to take two 10 millimeter spacers and a five millimeter spacer and we're going to feed the screw through them. And then we simply just want to screw this into the OEM U-nut in the splitter. That's going to be a T25. And we're going to go to, we're not going to go nuts because we still have to install the other side. But go ahead and repeat that process for the other uh, 18 millimeter hole. 
and then uh, we'll go ahead and install the rest of the bolts. All right, we have these two coarse thread bolts started. We're gonna take our 25 millimeter button head cap screws uh, with our inch and a quarter fender washers. And we're gonna begin starting them in their corresponding holes on the splitter. All right, the large diameter stuff is all started. The next thing we need to do is take two more 25 millimeter button head cap screws. This time we're gonna go back to 18 millimeter washers and we're going for this oddball uh, hole right here. So it's basically the second 18 millimeter hole over from the uh, Torx head screw we installed recently. So there's a cut there. Uh, fully admit it's gonna be a little bit weird to get started just cause the bumper can flex upwards while you're pushing the bolt uh, against it to start it. Again, a couple turns, um, not gonna tighten it down. Go ahead and uh, do the other side and then we need to start doing the rest of the Torx head screws. All right, so starting from the rear or the wheel well portion, we have one, two, three bolts. If you just follow them in a straight line, we do also have, I forgot to mention, two more that are gonna hold the wheel liner. We'll get to that at the very end. Basically, if you have the splitter loose, we wanna start bolting these three bolts that are in a line uh, on the bumper edge from the front to the back. We're gonna use, to begin with, also I know I said uh, Torx head, this is gonna be a button head cap screw, 30 millimeters, 18 millimeter washer, and a 10 millimeter spacer. And we're gonna put the spacer up in between the bumper and the splitter blade. And we're going to thread this into one of the U-nuts we installed into the bumper earlier. Just get it two turns and then we'll move to the next. Second hole from the rear, we got an eight millimeter spacer, 35 millimeter <clears throat> uh, Torx head, coarse thread screw, 18 millimeter washer. Same thing, we're gonna put the eight millimeter spacer in between the bumper and the splitter. And then you wanna line up the factory U-nut that's in the wheel liner, start that a couple threads. Finally, for the rear bolt, we got a 10 millimeter spacer and we have another 35 millimeter Torx head screw, just like the one we put in two seconds ago. We're going to thread that in. Let's do two turns, just like that. Splitter's set. Now let's move to the remaining two, if you're doing one side, uh, but four in total, bolts for the wheel liner. All right, next we have the final two bolts on this side. We have two right here, the leading um, bolts, two bolts for the fender liner. Uh, one of them is going to be the U-nut we transferred over from the center splash shield with the golf ball, golf ball shape. Uh, so in any case, we're gonna take two uh, 35 millimeter coarse thread Torx head cap screws and we're going to thread them into the U-nuts. Just give them a little turn. Now, uh, it is important to mention here that from the factory, the fender liner is tucked above, kind of like this, uh, there's like a piece of metal here for the uh, frunk tub. Uh, pull it so that it is no longer above it, but below it so that it's between the tub and the splitter. And this will help make it uh, more, mm, if you will, uh, flush. All right, so with that we have, we basically need to repeat the process for the other side, but ultimately we have all of the bolts installed. What we need to do, what I like to do is work from the middle out and begin tightening all of these bolts, all of them to six foot pounds. And once we do that, We'll be finished with the install. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all these bolts up and then uh, we'll get some sweet glamour shots. 
All right, and that's going to wrap up the install for the front splitter on the 718 GT4. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at barris-engineering.com. And until next time, we'll see you later.